Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of all shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome. build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen serve and teach and live the word they've known hear the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face let us bring an end Fear and danger, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat, a banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Hear the love of God embodied is revealed in time and space. As we share in hope the feast that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the world. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome. Welcome, welcome, dear ones. As we get, begin this joyous and momentous celebration, I have a couple of important and fun details to share with you. Today, we are blessed with art. Giselle Chow is a visual facilitator and graphic recorder. She is listening to the service and capturing in real time with words and graphics all that we are sharing together. You may follow along at any time by clicking the three dots in her Zoom image and choosing to pin her screen. Her finished graphics will be saved and shared after today as a visual memory. Another visual memory Greta would like to compile is selfies. She wants you to take a photo of yourself with her during her ordination. So get another device like a phone or a, a camera and take a selfie with her like I did during our tech check the other day. And you'll have an opportunity to share it. Greta will mention this later in the service, but get those other devices ready. For those of you who have made it a year of pandemic living without a Zoom meeting, welcome. We're glad to have you here. And for those of you who know Zoom well, I invite you to take a moment to send some smooth tech blessings our way. 
For those who are newer, here are the basics that are most important. The mute button for your video and audio can be found along the bottom of your screen when you tap or hover over that area. And you will be able to toggle between mute and unmute by touching or clicking on those icons. Most of the service, you will not have the ability to unmute yourself. So you can sing your heart out along with the music while muted. During some special moments, you will be able to, you'll be invited to unmute your video or your audio so that we can celebrate together. Another important feature is the chat bar. You'll see that people have started posting there. You can access that along the bottom of your screen as well and type your messages. By default, you'll be talking to everyone. And this is our communal conversation. You'll be invited to share here in key moments throughout the service as well. If you want to chat with just one person, you can click on everyone and scroll through the other participants. The last important feature that you need to know about Zoom is the views. There are two primary views which you can access in the upper right hand corner of most screens. You want to use the gallery view to see lots of people at once and speaker view if you want to just focus on whoever is speaking or singing at the time. Your view will change automatically when the host is sharing their screen or spotlighting an ordination participant. Now, dear ones, let us enter, rejoice, and begin.
is good to be together. And we get to be here from a wide variety of places thanks to technology. I'm Kelly Dignan and I'm in Denver, Colorado. And I know we have people in Michigan, Greta and her family and all the people of the Fountain Street Church are there. Our ordaining congregation, the UU Fellowship of Huntington is in Long Island, New York. There are people here from Washington State and California and Ontario, Can Canada. So if you'd like, you could tap into the type into the chat where you're calling from or where you are today. And while we do that, let's acknowledge the First Nations, the indigenous people who called the land home before the arrival of settlers and colonizers. We acknowledge the land was theirs and their rich and indigenous culture and governances continue today and into the future. You can learn about the First Nations of your location by going to this really cool website called Native Land. And Emily's gonna put it in the chat so you can grab it and look at it later. We don't just live on land, we live with it. We live with the rhythms of nature. And today is the spring equinox, a time when the length of day and night are nearly equal a time of balance, a time of planting seeds, new beginnings and hopes for the future. What a perfect day for an ordination. Greta and I met at the UU Church of Boulder when I was the minister there and she and Erdy were members. And we were together at a church gathering one day and she pulled me into the hallway and whispered to me, I think I wanna be a UU minister. Well, there was no whispering on my part. I shouted and I danced and we laughed today, still today about how I just went crazy, so excited. And I said, I knew it. I knew that you would do this and you will be wonderful. So here we are today and I feel like shouting and dancing again. We gather in joy to ordain Greta Jo Seidel as a Unitarian Universalist minister. Now, Unitarian Universalism is a faith grounded in covenant. And the Latin meaning of the word covenant is a promise to convene. Unitarian Universalists promise to convene, to stay connected in a world that's full of disconnection, isolation, and division. Now we promise to stay connected, not just to each other, but to our inner true selves, each of us. We promise to stay connected to those who are marginalized by systems of oppression. We promise to stay connected to the earth, to the interdependent web of life and to God. We also know that promises and connection are sometimes hard to do. Sometimes promises get broken. Jewish theologian Martin Buber says that human beings are promise-making, promise-keeping, promise-breaking, promise-renewing creatures. And so when we forget to stay connected, we begin again in love. Love is what nerves covenant. Love that, I love that verb, nerve, to nerve. Love, and especially God's love, is what makes covenant possible. Unitarian Universalists are as diverse as can be. That is a true story. But we find unity in our diversity because we center covenant and love. So we're here today because we love Greta and we love her ministry. And so fully embodying love and joy, we light this chalice, a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. You okay, Ellery? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Years ago, oh, <laughs> someone just woke up from a nap. Yeah. It's okay. Come here. Uh oh. Here we go. One second, folks. 
Someone uh, woke up on the wrong side of the crib. The crib. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So years ago, Greta and I were at a UU ceremony, and uh, one of the songs that was played uh, was good old Hymn 131 in your great hymn book, um, Love Will Guide Us uh, by Sally Rogers. And uh, as I listened to the lyrics, I found myself thinking of Greta. And the lyrics go, uh, if you cannot sing like angels, and well, okay, she can do that. And if you cannot speak before thousands, and that's actually what she gets paid to do, you can give from deep within you. And she's, yeah, that, mm -hmm. uh, you can change the world with your love. You can change the world with your love. Greta, uh, yeah, you can change the world with your love. I believe in that. Um, you've already taken me uh, back when I was a college student with a deep distrust of organized religion uh, and showed me the wonderful power of a church working together for justice in this world. There's nobody I have been more theologically frustrated by. And I am grateful for your trust and your patience. <laughs> I feel so deeply that the world needs organizers and leaders like you. We need a new, loving, angry, creative, and intelligence, intelligent response to the old and destructive ways. And I have seen you do this. And I know that as an ordained minister, you will be able to do so much more. I am so proud of you. Ellery, okay, now I'm tearing up. Uh, <laughs> almost made it. I'm so proud of you. Ellery and I have both seen how much work and care you have put into this. And we will be there for you when it gets to be too much. <laughs> uh, and to help you carry that mantle of ministry in whatever ways that we can. I love you. Go get them. Okay, go take care of the kid. Okay. <laughs> Give me a mighty oak to hold 
confusion Give me a desert To hold my fears Give me a sunset To hold my wonder Give me an ocean To hold my tears I am open And I am willing so strange it dishonors those who go before us so lift me up to the night and change sing it wherever you are i'm open i am open and i am willing to be hopeless what seems so strange it dishonors those who go before us so lift me up to the light of change it dishonors those who go before us so lift me up to the light of change It is good to be together. I asked Greta Jo, what do you want the people to go away with feeling from your ordination? And she said, to really know and to deeply understand that it is good to be together. So repeat after me, stay muted, it. It is, it is good. It is good to be, it is good to be together. Now, I have worked for almost 20 years in institutional ministry. I work for our denomination, Greta Joe and I, the Unitarian Universalist Association, helping congregations choose well-being and vitality, faithfulness. Congregational leaders call me usually at two different times, either when things are good and they want to get even more courageous with their mission, or most likely, more likely, when they've stepped in it, when they need help cleaning up a mess. My mother, who tries to explain my work, she says, I'm a religious fixer. And I suspect she's watched just a little too much scandal on television. But the truth is, I see the hard stuff, the behavior you can't unsee. Human beings, we are messy and conflict is never simple. Anxiety has been especially extraordinary in the world. Oh my goodness. And religious people, we're not immune to that. We're not immune to hurting each other. I suspect both conflict and exhaustion have been at an all time high in religious communities around the world. So I admit when Greta Jo said with such earnestness, it is good to be together. My first reaction was, but is it really? Just being honest. And for those of you who are not Unitarian Universalists, our tradition does not have a creed or a dogma that we subscribe to. We have these principles that our congregations covenant, the congregations covenant to affirm and promote. But each religious community, and this still blows my mind, each congregation decides their own meaning of membership and how we will be together, covenant. 
it makes for a very wide variety of individual searches for truth and meaning under one roof. Well, when we, when we did that. A former boss of mine, a Presbyterian minister used to poke at me, poke fun at me and say that you use could believe anything that we wanted to. Oh my goodness. He would get such a rise out of me. I hate it when people say that. And many of our own members still say that out of ignorance and unchecked privilege, I suspect. And it's simply just not true. And when I left that job with the Presbyterian minister, I asked him, kidding aside, what do you really think of Unitarian Universalists? I mean, really? And he got very serious. And he said that it was his favorite place to preach because curiosity is one of our spiritual practices. And that he thinks we are among the most disciplined religious people he knows. What? Because plurality demands it. To have that amount of difference among religious community must require such a disciplined practice of covenant. I think that is awfully generous and aspirational and I still hold it close to me. I'd like to live up to that. In order to do so requires such a spiritual maturity it requires both a compassionate differentiation and also a shift from I to we. That this diversity might come together in humility and reverence to create a larger, more complete, beloved community. I believe we made a mistake back when our principles were voted on by our General Assembly, and yet we voted on principles. I still wonder if, how can you vote on something so prophetic, but we, we do that thing. We voted on them. And I wonder, I often wonder what our religious culture would be like if number seven had been number one. I'm gonna get to what those are for those of you who are UU. It's like, what, they number what? Okay, so most people don't get past our first principle, which is the inherent worth and dignity of every person. It sounds lovely, it's, but here's the thing. It's often used as a weapon, right? And when I've heard, I hang out at youth conferences a lot and the youngers, when they hear us using our principles as a way, like a weapon, so like we didn't get our way, so we're gonna use our principles so that we get our way, they call that throwing chalices using our principles as self-serving weapons, right? So when we are held accountable for our words or actions or conflicts, that can get uncomfortable. And we often claim our inherent worth and dignity is being violated. Well, people. Sometimes behaviors, words, and ideas are neither worthy or dignified. They're two different things. The principles are not about individuals getting their way or being allowed to continue harm when an individual puts up their boundary and claims their truth. If you have lived your life with privilege, and I'm talking about myself here, then equality can feel uncomfortable. Oh my goodness, yes. Every time I get uncomfortable, I think, ooh, I think liberation's happening. Try it sometime. So no longer, so I can no longer be the center. That can be painful and disorienting. And if you lived your life, a slow death of constant microaggressions or blatant oppression, then equality is closer to liberation. And isn't that what we want? Collective liberation. So what if, the seventh principle, respect for the inherent, excuse me, no, respect for the interdependent. It see, it just comes out, right? I'm proving my point, it just comes out. But what if the seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are all a part was number one. 
the first one learned, the first one out of our mouth. Understanding that until we are all free, then no one is free. What would we be like if number seven was number one? What if instead of membership, simply requiring signing a membership book and making a donation, a record, pablum people, pablum. What if the annual membership prerequisite was ongoing faith formation that was essential to embodying a covenant in a pluralistic religious community? I need that. I need that. Oh, do I need that? I think we all need it. Think of it, an ongoing power analysis within church, an ongoing power analysis and understanding of our social locations as we move through the world with changing contexts constantly. It would raise our self-awareness and our interdependent awareness, skill building for generative conflict, peace circles to build our empathy muscles, clinics to help us love each other better rather than the shame and blame that comes from giving and receiving microaggressions, restorative practices woven through everything we do. What I'm talking about is spiritual maturity. Yes, please. Can you imagine this as the requirement of membership? Equipping our people to faithfully live into our covenant. That is the good I'm still here for. Good can be seen, that word good. It can be seen as such a meek and understated word. In the Tanakh, the English word good stands in for many kinds of good. It's like the English word rain. And if you speak an indigenous language in the Pacific Northwest where I live, there are at least 50 variations for this word rain in the English language. So in the Tanakh, there is so much more to good. And when I think of that, when I hear Greta Jo say, it is good to be together, beneficial, moral excellence, kind, kind, benevolent, complete, honorable, prosperous, adequate, honest, worthy, noble, I could go on. What would it take for us to aspire to live into this fleshed out goodness? It's long haul work, people, long haul work. Representative John Lewis, may he rest in power, tweeted, our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble. This is both tender and fierce work. It is messy, it is awkward. And I've come to embrace messy and awkward as a spiritual practice that I'm proud of. Shared ministry and our people will break your heart on the regular. And I often succumb to exhaustion and despair. But when Joe sings songs that call me back in, how can I not be open and willing if you all will be too? For to be hopeless would be strange. It would dishonor those ancestors who have gone before us, who sent us. It would break promises with colleagues like Greta Jo, and it would let down those who are still coming, still seeking a faith that leaves no one behind. A faith that works for a world that would do the same to leave no one behind. 
And just as many of us recommit to love at weddings, may, recomm may we recommit to our vows to the universe and each other and the ancestors and those yet to come at this ordination. It is good to be together. It is good to be. It is good. It is. Thank you so much. In the spirit of tending our sacred fires so they might grow and flourish, our offering today 
will go to the Living Tradition Fund and Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism. The Living Tradition Fund provides support for the Unitarian Universalist professional ministry and offers scholarships, debt assistance, and emergency grants to seminarians, ministers, religious professionals, and congregational staff. Collecting an offering to the Living Tradition Fund is traditional practice at ordinations. Black Lives of UU, or Blue, is a collaborative organization dedicated to expanding the power and capacity of Black Unitarian Universalists, providing support and resources to Black UUs, and forging justice and liberation throughout our faith. We are collecting offerings for Blue in recognition of racial inequity throughout our tradition's history and today and in gratitude for the continuing and ongoing liberative work of Black Unitarian Universalists. While our offertory plays, you can contribute by going to each site separately, posted in the chat, or the instructions will be on your screen. When making your donation, I invite you not to pick and choose based on ideas of what might need more, but to contribute equally to both of these essential UU funds in order of Greta Joe's ordination. The work of Blue and of the Living Tradition Fund benefits all Unitarian Universalists, and we are known by the fires we choose to tend. As we grow our circle ever wider, may we recognize invitations to generosity as opportunities to live out our values and commitments and ensure that all are able to thrive in our faith. The offering will now be collected and most gratefully received. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend this fire. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change of life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive, it is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the Change a life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we cry, it is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jude Geiger. I'm the minister serving the UU Fellowship in Huntington, where Greta Jo Seidel served as our ministerial intern for two years, and then agreed to the, the normal process of being a sabbatical preacher for six months. Uh, and we would learn later that COVID would start during that time. It was a real gift to have you with us, Greta Jo, and I couldn't think of a better person to be in that role during that time, so thank you. Today, let me move my screen around a little bit, sorry. Today, we celebrate the ordination of Greta Jo Sadal into the Unitarian Universalist Ministry. In our congregational polity, it is solely the honor and role of the congregation 
to ordain a person into the ministry. All the preparation, discernment, education, vocational training, and spiritual deepening that has led to this moment is a personal success of the minister, though surely there were countless mentors and souls along the way that made this road possible for Greta Jo. But today is a communal success. Ordination is not simply a conferring of the title of reverend, but an acknowledgement of a call and the acknowledgement of a relationship. The EU Fellowship of Huntington has recognized, witnessed, and affirmed Greta Joe's call to the ministry, and has done so formally through a unanimous vote of the fellowship's membership. This is a theological matter. In recognizing your call, Greta Joe, our fellowship seizure ministry is a success of our own, too and an extension of our voice in the world. You are your own minister, and you are also a part of this congregation's spiritual history and legacy to come. The spirit you bring into this world is in part ours, and the spirit we bring to the world is forever impacted by yours. It is in part yours. Ordination is a matter of legacy. I'm thinking this afternoon of one member of your ministerial internship committee, who is no longer with us, a matriarch of our fellowship, Mary Jane Walkinger. She was our local saint. She would hate it if she knew I was saying that. She always hated it when I said that, but she was our local saint. She was a role model to us all and an informal and formal mentor to so many powerful women. And she saw in you a ministry she wanted to support and nurture during your time with us. She is with the cloud of ancestors now, but her honest smile and her quiet, humble and warm life is carried on by your ministry throughout all your days. Like the pebble falling into the water of life, we know not where those ripples will someday lead, but today in this ordination, another ancestor's ripples have led to you. Wherever they ripple forth now, your voice, your call, your life, each inform and are informed by the sacred act of ordination we come together to recognize your ministry, yes. We come together to affirm your call, yes. Ordination is both of these. Ordination is also recognizing this most difficult of lessons, that you have come out of this community, and in so doing, though you are part of our collective story, you take on a new role, set apart from the mantle of lay leadership. To be ordained is to remember that ministry is not about you. It is about all of us. And you soon will now carry that honor and that duty with you. Many blessings in the years to come, Greta Jo. It has been a joy and a privilege to grow with you over these past three or four years. Amen and blessed be. Hello, my name is Jim Monier. And it is my pleasure to be here today. And uh, thank you, Jude, so much for mentioning Mary Jane just before I had a talk. So uh, <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> In the living tradition of Unitarian Universalism, the authority to confer ordination lies wholly with individual congregations. It is an especially profound and joyous occasion for a congregation to recognize one who has answered the call to ministry as their life's work. The act of ordination bestows the authority of religious leadership, the title of reverend, and the privilege to wear a stole. Today, the members of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington gather to ordain Greta Josephine Seidel to the Unitarian Universalist Ministry. As board president, it is both my honor and my privilege to represent the entire congregation today. Greta, you came to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington, and to save time, I'll refer to it as UUFH from here on in, for your internship over three years ago, already on your path to ministry, but here you immersed yourself further in our shared faith tradition and found opportunities for leadership and service. You have undergone the deep work of preparation for ministry and have allowed it to open your heart to the sacred possibilities of life. Recognizing your call to serve this faith 
and having received the recommendation of the Ministerial Fellowship Committee of the Unitarian Universalist Association, and by the authority of a vote of this congregation, we wish to offer you ordination. Greta, are you ready to accept this responsibility? the joys, the privileges, and the burdens of ordained ministry in this Unitarian Universalist tradition. I am. That's good. As the congregation that partnered with Greta in her formation, witnessed her claiming of her gifts, her ministerial authority, will the members of the UUFH please get ready to affirm this ordination in a moment. With this right, we acknowledge our own calling to be engaged and active partners in our covenantal tradition, to be in relationship with others, to be in community in times of ease and in times of difficulty. We affirm our commitment to the shared ministry of our Unitarian Universalist faith, our community and our world. Members of the UUFH, please unmute yourselves now to answer this following question. Are we prepared now to renew these responsibilities and confer ordination upon Greta? We, we are. are. We are. There we go. By the authority granted in our living, by our living tradition, we, the members of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington, joyfully ordain you, the Reverend Greta Josephine Seidal, into the Unitarian Universalist ministry. May you minister from your whole self, heart and mind, body and spirit, wherever you may be called to serve, we charge you to speak the truth to power in freedom and love to reveal sacred spaces of mystery, wonder and awe, to foster connection and community, to journey with and hold others in their joys and sorrows, to inspire others to live boldly and authentically, and to work for justice each day to heal our broken world through love. We pledge to support you throughout your ministry in all the ways that we can. With deep joy and gratitude, I humbly accept the Unitarian Universalist ministry to which you ordain me. Mindful of the immense privileges and responsibilities of ministry, I dedicate myself to this work. I pledge myself to nurture compassion, hope, and joy, to bear witness to the pain and promise of life to work to create wholeness and justice in our world, to lovingly remind us of the enduring values that we profess, to embody the living tradition of our faith and to always be guided by a powerful love that exceeds all expectations. I also gratefully acknowledge that like those who went before me and those who come after, I cannot do it alone. We journey together. I ask for your love, your support, as I take up this ministry alongside you. Will all others assembled here please add your love and encouragement to this ordination in the chat stream? Greta, we affirm you and send you forth as a minister in our tradition, knowing that we commission you to bring insight, care, inspiration, and a call to action to all whose lives you touch as you nurture our spirits and help heal the world. As you go forth, know that our support goes with you wherever you may go. Will those gathered please briefly unmute and join in a final response of celebration? Yippee! Congratulations. Congrats.
I just, I don't know that you could hear it, but the bells just started chiming here at Fountain Street Church. The bells are ringing. <laughs> In a moment, your family will place a stole upon your shoulders, a representation of the yoke of ministry. Though it is made only of fabric and thread, we know that its weight is great. We know that we gathered here today believe that you are fully capable of carrying this tradition, carrying this weight with humility and grace, and that you will be careful that this weight does not overburden you, your ministry, personhood, or relationships. And there is another one on the way. We would, we could blame FedEx, but we'll, we, we'll get it to you. I know, bud. Can you say hi to everyone? Yeah. Hi. Okay. Give me a second. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I would like to present you with this stole, which was handmade uh, by my elementary school math and music teacher um, and an absolutely uh, amazing fiber artist, Cheryl Andrews. So you get to put it on. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. We believe Cheryl is with us today. Look at Mama's. No, no. Yeah. No. No. It's okay. It's okay. Come on. You want to go play? You want to go play in the. You can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd like to welcome. This is my mom and my dad. <laughs> This is a pictorial representation um, of her family's perspective on Greta Joe's spiritual journey. And it starts grounded. Well, I was gonna do the other side first, oh, but okay. <laughs> starts grounded um, uh, deep in the woods in the UP um, where the trilliums flourish and the birch trees are abundant and getting ready to bloom right now. Um, the monarchs have long been um, since Greta was nine, but that takes about three campfires to tell you that story. <laughs> so the monarchs have long been a symbol for her. Um, and then coming down the other side um, are the five jagged rocks, um, which um, I did that in the wrong order, but are the five jagged rocks, which are an adaptation of the five smooth stones um, for um, an adaptation and articulated for Unitarian Universalism by Reverend Mike Moran and Reverend Nancy Bowman. And that portion also depicts the rugged shores of Lake Superior, along with, for those of you in the Boulder community, there is a flat iron mixed in here. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, and then the five smooth stones at the bottom, um, five, representing the five smooth stones of religious liberalism um, as written by James Luther Adams. Can you tell about the heart? I can tell about the heart. <laughs> There's also a wonderful little chalice on the oh. other side there. <laughs> um, the heart is um, made from a pair of my mother's wool hunting pants, and she's pictured back here. Um, and um, yeah, we, that's it, made from a pair of wool hunting pants that were my mother's. <laughs> 
I'll tell it then. Okay. Uh, my grandma, Jean, was the first UU in my family and um, was a member of the Church of the Larger Fellowship back when it was by mail. And um, so it was the first UU in my family. Um, so she gets to be with me on this journey. And I just want to shout out to one of the members of our family by choice, um, Carla Minucci, who's the artist, yeah. who this is done with significant love as well as artistry. <laughs> Love me. Joe, you've been here since uh, October, and ever since the first day you got here, I've struggled to not call you Reverend Greta. Uh, and so, if nothing else, I'm so excited that I finally don't have to trip and stumble. But the reality is, it's such a joy to be your colleague. Matthew and I uh, are humbled to share this work with you and this space with you, especially here at Fountain Street Church. These stoles were commissioned to you and for you by our very own Liz DeBraber. She's a member here at Fountain Street Church. She's a fabulous fabric artist, one of many here. They are inspired by the notions of the ways of spirit that are articulated by Matthew Fox. The via negativa, a way of knowing or unknowing and negation. The via positiva, a way of knowing and clarity. The via creativa, a way of generation and integration. And the via transformativa, a way of new possibility new possibilities like today. Greta Joe, we see all of these things in you. Spirit manifests in you through your courage and your compassion. Spirit manifests in you through your joy and your creativity. Spirit manifests through you in your vision of a world that's transformed, moving ever closer to the crowded table. <laughs> we are so grateful for the many ways in which all of these manifested manifestations have brought you here to Fountain Street Church with us, with all the folks that I see joining <laughs> us from Fountain Street Church in a Zoom call. We've learned how to Zoom so well here. <laughs> We're so grateful for all of that that have brought you here to help us free the mind and grow the soul and change the world. And so we promise to you, Matthew and I and this community, that we will continuously uplift you, encourage you, and affirm you in all of these strengths that you bring to our community. And as you continue this ministry to bless the world through the sharing of your gifts, we hope that this humble offering and this token from this community will be a reminder of the greater spirit that resides inside of you and around you in a place that you can always find rest. Congratulations. <laughs> all will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. Wherever life may call you, wherever you may dwell, all will be well, all will be well. We gather here to witness and affirm the harmony of spirit and of heart. Manifest within you, brought forth from deepest hope to be a force of healing in this world. All will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. Wherever life may call you, wherever you may dwell, all will be well, all will be well. You find your purpose in service to a light that emanates from each and every being that is in life. We see the gifts that blossom in your care and the people who are nourished by your love. Well, all manner of things will be well.
well Wherever life may call you Wherever you may dwell All will be well, all will be well May you go forth To mend what has been broken To feed those who are hungry Quench the ones who thirst for a world of compassion, for mercy that abounds, and a place to dwell in sacred gentleness. All will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. Life may call you wherever you may dwell. All will be well, all will be well. Everybody sing it one more time. All will be well. All will be well. All will be well. All manner of things will be well. Wherever life may call you. Wherever life may call you. Wherever you may dwell, all will be well, all will be well. Wherever life may call you, wherever you may dwell, all will be well, all will be well. All will be well. My name is Reverend Beckett Coppola, and it is my honor to invite you now into a time of blessing and prayer. Please find a posture for contemplation that honors your body and relax into an attitude of contemplation that honors your mind. We are here to wrap the Reverend Greta Jo Seidel in the love of the people who have joined her on her journey to this moment, to bless the path she travels and to affirm the words spoken in this gathered body, ordaining Greta Jo today. We are laying onto her our words, our reflections and our prayers in the form of fiber art, a quilted blessing. Greta worked with a quilter and dear family friend on this project, sending hundreds of small fabric squares to congregants, colleagues, friends, and family. The instructions were to bless the square as you would bless her ministry. Whether that was to pray over it, draw or write on it, or whatever you were moved to do, and then to return the square. The squares were then joined into a large prayer shawl to be placed over Greta Joe's shoulders today. And there are even a few squares left blank intentionally for those Greta hasn't yet met and for those too far away or otherwise unable to be included. The beauty of this physical blessing of Greta Joe and her ministry is that it will always be with her. It will always be there to warm her shoulders, and comfort her heart throughout the days of her ministry. Please take this time to truly acknowledge Greta deeply as the image of her is highlighted for all of us. I invite you to connect in the manner that best suits you. And if it is comfortable to do so, please reach out and touch the device that connects you to this gathering as her family lays the shawl over her shoulders. Everyone look into Greta's eyes. See Greta's face. Reflect on all you know of her call, of her ministry. Hear the words she has written or spoken that have touched you, 
Think of the actions she has undertaken that have inspired you. Connect deeply with all you know Greta to be. And truly perceive the essence of her ministry. What blessing would you offer her in this moment? What words are ready to flow from your heart to hers? When you are ready, please type those words into the chat. Reverend Greta Joe Seidel. Drink in the energy of blessing that is laying across your shoulders. Think of all the hands that have touched each piece of fabric in the shawl. See our faces as we look to you in this moment. And hear our words as we bless you with our love and our faith. Let us all come together now in prayer and keep typing comments in as you're moved to bless Greta with your words. Spirit of life and love, that which is holy and known by many names, please be with us for this moment. We gaze now upon a companion in faith who has been called forth and as a community, we recognize her by her new name. We know that during this gathering, she has been transformed. We honor that Greta Jo today is given the title of reverend, recognizing the mantle of ministry she is called to and which she will wear as she continues her work in our world. Greta, may this quilted blessing comfort you, hold you, and heal you in the years to come, reminding you always of the people from which you were called forth. May the power of spirit hold us all together as the threads of the shawl. May the blessing of spirit come through us all and serve the world with courageous love. And may the grace of spirit bind us together as it binds us to the beauty of the interdependent world and our mission to carry forth this living tradition. Hariyom Shanti Shom. Peace. Blessed be. Reverend Greta Jo. So glad to be able to say those words. So glad to have you as a colleague. I have been waiting for several years for this. From that moment when we first met at at a admissions event at Meadville, and I knew that this day would come, and it would be filled with joy. I feel the, I want you to take a moment to just feel the presence of who is here. Not only are you have so many loved ones, but just the number of colleagues who are here for this ordination, who some who don't even know you well, but came to support and love you on this journey. And that is the importance of colleagues. That is what we stand for, how, it, how we hold the space. Our ministry at times can be very lonely, can be very isolating. We can be, and I think you will understand where I'm going with this, like isolated planets in a galaxy. And we need that United Federation to hold us together, to help us remember the, that peace, love, and justice can be everywhere. 
that the work that we do alone is magnified when we work together. And that is what colleagues are for. That those moments when you are feeling stuck and things are not working out, that you have colleagues who are holding you and want the best from you. And all we ask is that you also be there to hold us when we are in need and bring out the best in us. And so it is with great, great pleasure that I welcome you to the circle of colleagues. I am the Reverend Kimberly Tomchek Carlson, Minister of Religious Education at the First Unitarian Society of Milwaukee, and honored to be a part of this duo, which is really a triad, that is giving the charge to the minister today. Dear Greta, how fortuitous that our time at Meadville Lombard overlapped. Some of my favorite memories of seminary are filled with your smiling presence. Whether it was teaching me how to graduate school read in the Catholic dorms or walking at breakneck speed down the streets of Chicago for a good cup of coffee from a fourth wave or maybe first wave coffee shop, your friendship has continued to be one of the greatest gifts of my life. I am honored and thrilled to be a part of your life and this auspicious day. I am the Reverend Kim Mason minister at the First Unitarian Church of St. Louis. Dear Greta, we had our very first seminary class together, Creative Encounters, otherwise known as Improv. You were the first to say, yes, let's, and the one always willing to take on a role when others hung back. You encouraged us all to join in. In hindsight, that very first class was a microcosm of your presence all three years at Meva Lombard. Thank you for saying yes, let's to our friendship and to the triad that never was. Greta, my extroverted friend, one of the things I love most about you is how you embrace your love of the world and its people. I believe this is your superpower. You enthusiastically, unabashed, love people, believe in people, and find joy at discovering who they are. Inside of you burns a curiosity and a love for all of humanity, which can bring out good inside people. Greta, I charge you to embrace your superpower. I charge you not only to continue to use your superpower for good, but to nurture it. This work, 
this world is hard on that kind of powerful universal love and it will need to be tended to, rekindled and even stood up for. It is a great gift you offer all of us and I charge you to care for it. Greta, your tremendous enthusiasm for life and ministry works on you, yourself, just as it works on others. You have a creative gift and come up with wonderful ideas. Most people say, yes, let's write along with you. And I know on the few occasions when those ideas fail, it is very hard. You care about the work you do and the people you serve. Your generous and compassionate heart gets bruised when things don't work out the way you expected. I charge you in those moments to be kind with yourself. We who love you know that you literally don't know how to do anything other than your best. And so I charge you to remember in those moments of doubt and uncertainty, grace is there and grace will carry you through. On this day, I charge you with words that have empowered, held, and helped me many times in ministry. My first covenant is with my family. These words have kept me focused and grounded when the work and love of ministry just asks too much, and it will, frequently. May the excitement and love of ministry be second to your family, your roots, in your heart, and in your commitments. From one optimistic and spontaneous seven to another, I charge you to balance your ministry by focusing on your remarkable family. Greta, you are entering ministry young, not just a new minister, but as someone with many years ahead of you. What a fabulous opportunity your ministry will be shaped by all that you experience and you will have the opportunity to shape and reshape your ministry over the years. I charge you to be intentional about innovation to create a long and vibrant career. I know you will be a minister who always owns her identity and takes care to center those from the margins. So I charge you to remember to ask for help. You are held now and always by your colleagues who want you to have a thriving and successful career so that you may always be able to say with joy and confidence, yes, let's. Dear friend, you are so charged. Blessed be. We love you. I'm the Reverend Dr. Sophia Betancourt, and I have the immense privilege of serving on the faculty at Star King School for the ministry. It is a blessing to be with you all on this day. We come to this sacred day in the midst of transition as a people of faith. We have ordained the Reverend Greta Jo Seidel into our Unitarian Universalist ministry in a time when we are blessed as a people to be taking a deep collective dive into the values that we hold most dear. As a non-credal tradition that celebrates its inherited theological foundations, we carry with us reminders from our forebears to resist the dangers of an unexamined faith. In this season, we are blessed by the work of Paula Cole Jones and others who labor to bring an eighth principle into our shared covenant as you use, one that centers multicultural beloved community and the work of dismantling racism and other forms of oppression. A team of trusted religious leaders across our movement are reviewing and revising our seven principles already in place to serve as our moral guides. And our commission 
on institutional change gifted us less than a year ago with the fruits of their labor, inviting us to the profound work of widening our circle of concern. In essence, we have charged and blessed this minister in a time when we have nothing but opportunity to live more deeply into the values that we hold most dear. And we know from generations of religious leaders and the histories of the communities they serve that no one can do the work of ministry alone. Ministry is a force moving the communal body just like muscles that animate our physical bodies. No one muscle can do the work alone. They dance in pairs their movement, a balance that sets our living in motion. It is all of you, members of the beloved communities that call the Reverend Greta Jo into ministry and that build collaboratively together with her leadership who are needed for her ministry to survive and to thrive. It is together in shared ministry that the promise of our liberating tradition moves forward to its true purpose. I know the work that Unitarian Universalism is modeling to progressive religious communities and learning from the witness of others is challenging work. It is long term, long haul work. I know that most of us will find ourselves in moments when we would prefer to be doing anything other than this cultural reshaping, this restoration, this deep commitment to repair. But what I have learned from the Reverend Greta Jo herself is how profoundly it matters, as we have heard, that we do this work together. This time has more than arrived and the labor awaits us no matter where we find ourselves in community. And so what a blessing it is then to be in a spiritual home that honors our capacity, that trusts in our inherent goodness, and that wraps us all in an all-embracing love that will never let us go. This is the promise that we celebrate on this day. This is the invitation to lean into the blessing, into the leadership and witness of our beloved's ministry. And so I charge us all to be changed by our shared ministry with the Reverend Greta Jo Seidel, that we might live more fully into everything that we hold dear. May it be so. It has absolutely been my honor to be here today to celebrate the ordination of Reverend Greta Jo Seidel. Um, this last song was the one piece that we began with is the absolutely quintessential necessary piece to this ordination musically will you come with me on this journey with every breath we take keep reaching for the dawn i know alone that i will falter but with a good friend near me i will carry on in this case we know that reverend greta joe seidel is surrounded by hundreds and thousands across the globe of good friends. People that are invested in the idea of the success of her ministry and the health and well-being of her as an individual and in the context of family life. And we will all hold her in that context and support her. Please sing with from wherever you are.
come with me on this journey with every breath we take keep reaching for the dawn i know alone and i will falter with a good friend near me i will carry It's an illusion we carry with us as we wade on through the waters of our lives. We must be strong and hold our own here. But a helping hand will save us by and by. Will you come with me? Will you come with me on this journey? Every breath we take, keep reaching for the dawn. I know alone, I will falter. With a good friend near me, I will carry on. Will you come with me on this journey? Every breath we take, keep reaching for the dawn. It has been so good <laughs> to be together. I am so grateful for your presence today. But before I offer the benediction, I wouldn't be my extroverted Enneagram 7 self if I didn't invite you into a bit, a moment of memory making together. If we were gathered in person, then there would have been opportunities to preserve this togetherness through pictures. Fortunately, we still can. It's just going to look a little different. I want to invite you to pull out your cell phone. I know you've got one. And take a selfie with me in a minute. I'm going to lean in. We're going to make sure that I am spotlighted on Zoom. So I take up all of your screen, then we're gonna lean in close and throw up your best selfie arm to capture this unique kind of being together. And then I'm gonna invite you to send those to me. I'll post links on Facebook and my website and all that kind of stuff, but get those to me somehow. All right, so don't let the awkwardness stop you. Smile, here we go. <laughs> Did you get one? Take one another one just to be sure. <laughs> Beloveds, friends, colleagues, families, Unitarian Universalists and beyond. Thank you for being here today in body and spirit, from near and from far, for holding space with reverence and with jubilation. Whoever you are, wherever we met on our life's journey, you are a beloved partner in the work of ministry. Co-conspirators, colleagues, collaborators, and community builders that I am honored to learn and to labor and to lead alongside. As I take up this mantle that's gotten rather heavy with all four of them on there, this mantle of ministry, this work of a lifetime, the hard and holy long haul work we are in together. My prayer for this day 
that the messages of it would weave together and wrap around you like a prayer shawl, warming you in times of doubt, nurturing you toward growth, calming you in times of conflict, and challenging you to always remember that we were meant to be together. May it be so now and always. As Joe sings us out, and I invite you to sing along, I ask you to please hang out here in the Zoom room for another minute. Turn your video on so I can see your smiling faces. And as Joe sings, I'm going to walk over to the computer and I'm going to scroll through and take in your beautiful mugs. So hang out. I love you. Thank you. Let's get to work. wish you peace and every blessing on your journey as you learn to cherish each and every day. May your tears be those of healing. May your laughter bring you joy and may true love be your companion on the way. I wish you peace. I wish you peace and every blessing every blessing on your journey as you learn to cherish each and every day to cherish each and every day may your tears be those of healing may your laughter bring you joy and may true love be your companion on the way one more time i wish you peace i wish you peace every blessing on your journey as you learn to cherish each and every day may your tears be those of healing may your laughter bring you joy and may true love be your companion on the way may your tears be those of healing May your laughter bring you joy and may true love be your companion on the way. Oh.